Hello again, Dr. Phil Hiday here, Director of Functional Integrative Medicine here at the Amen Clinic. We had a lot of response about the talk about anxiety last week, so I'm going to cover another big one, which is depression. So, what could cause your depression? Lots of things. Uh, there's kind of two main branching points. You can certainly have psychological causes for depression, right? The normal human responses are you lose a loved one, you lose your job, right? That's kind of normal to feel depressed. And that's situational. But there are people with chronic depression that just can't shake it. That's very different. Uh, it could still be psychologically based, but again, there might be physiologic things going on. And this happens quite often. Again, so you know, we do our scans here, and when you see a scan that doesn't look good, there's something physically wrong with your brain. You can't think your way into that. Something's going on. So that's kind of where I come in. I try to figure out what that could be. A perfect case. There was a, a young teenager, 16 years old, uh, that was here with severe lethargy, depression, anhedonia, which means you know, just don't really care about anything. There's no joy left in life. So one of our other doctors, scan didn't look so good, so sent to me, and his mother actually had sent me something before I saw him to say, you better convince him to do therapy because he needs psychotherapy. And I had already started the workup on him, and it turns out he had all kinds of things wrong. He had lots of viruses. He had almost no adrenal function left, right? So his cortisol was flatlined. No wonder he's feeling like that, right? You're not going to feel good if you have no energy and your hormones are gone and you have viruses on board. So that's a physiologic cause for depression. Hormones are another real big one, especially for women that have cyclic problems with mood. PMS, but PMS isn't just you're irritable. PMS is really anything that's cyclic with your period. So. If you are depressed, more depressed, more anxious around that time, that's hormonal for the most part, right? And that can be modified with hormone modification, not just meds. So that's another reason why you can probably, most people could probably get rid of a lot of their medications if they were just balanced physiologically. Gut imbalances, right? Your stomach runs your brain, literally half of your... 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So if you have a problem there, you have a problem here. Neurotransmitters are made in here. Low vitamin D contributes to depression. It's kind of a big buzzword in the community. A lot of people that are doing biohacking now are aware of MTHFR gene. So this is a gene. It's quite common to have a modification. If you have this, you don't methylate well. So methylation is a really important process that determines your gene function, your neurotransmitter production. There's actually a prescription medication called Deplin that's used for depression. It's just B vitamins. And one B vitamin, folate. Why does that work? Methylation. It actually addresses that gene problem. right? So a lot of people are running around with this issue and don't know. It also predisposes to other health issues if you have this gene modification. But it's not as simple as some people make out. There's more than one gene involved here. We got a lot of people that come in that hear about this or know about it, and they're automatically taking something to fix that, but you, it's not that simple. So you can do this with genetic testing. Uh, 23andMe, if you haven't heard about that, really highly recommend it. You get a lot of genetic information for very little money. You do it on your own. It's not from doctors. And that information can be used to determine some of your genetics. You can even download your data when you do that. It's all meant for the public. It's easy to get your own portal. You can find ancestry information, etc. But you get health information. You can use that to plug into other things online to um, see what your genetics are. So that's one thing that we do and that I do, is to find out what's going on metabolically with you. Infections, you know, I've spoken about Lyme before. Can that cause depression? Sure. So a lot of physiologic things, Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mono, if that's chronic, you can get depression. So again, lots of 
biologic things. There's actually a company that came up with blood tests to determine to, to diagnose major depressive disorder with a blood test, right? So, and you can't think your way into that. There's something physiologic going on in your body, causing and your brain to cause you to have depression. So, inflammation is associated with depression. A lot of those blood tests from that company were looking for inflammatory markers. So again, you know, having a high index of suspicion, like what's going on, that's what I do. Um, some folks have also been interested in, you know, coming to the clinic. Uh, you can certainly do that. You know, we have our big three-day program, but also I do remote things, you know, on a, without seeing people via phone. So that can be done. It's a one-hour visit. You can certainly come to any of our clinics and do our big three-day program. But they can kind of get the ball rolling. So, again, there's treatments for all those things, right? So if you find the cause of the problem, you can get better if you treat the problem that's causing your depression. So, again, it's always, you know, how much is psychiatric versus physiologic? There's, there's usually some kind of balance there. Sometimes it's all physiologic or 90% of it. So those are the cases where you really want to look because the tragedy there is missing it. And you're diagnosed with depression forever and you're on meds forever when you could just fix your biology. So another little tidbit. So see you next week.